On test day, you'll be asked to complete either two or three of the PTE writing summarized written text tasks. These texts are up to 300 words long and you have to summarize the content of these texts by writing a single grammatically cohesive sentence. Hi, I'm Natasha and in this video we're going to practice two summarized written text tasks. But first, I want to teach you a few strategies you can use on test day. So here it is again. The text that we are going to summarize is at the top of the page. Below it is the box where you write your single sentence summary. You're given a total of 10 minutes to complete the task. 10 minutes should be enough time for you to read the entire text carefully, summarize each part of the text, link the key ideas into a single sentence, and very importantly, go back, check, edit, revise, and perfect your single sentence summary. I recommend this timing. Two minutes to read, six to seven minutes to write, one to two minutes to proofread and edit. Let's now look at some strategies you can use to make this task easier. Before we do though, be sure to subscribe for more PTE videos. Okay, the first thing you should do is identify key words. These are usually subject nouns and main verbs. Identifying the key words helps us to focus on the essence of the text, the most important thread of meaning which we summarize in our single sentence summary. After we find these keywords, we reduce each paragraph or section into a simple sentence. Often the text has three paragraphs. By writing a simple sentence for each one and breaking the text into smaller pieces, we make the task much more manageable and as a result, our summary becomes much more structured. Finally, we link the simple sentences into one complex sentence. To link these simple sentences together, use conjunctions, relative pronouns, and participle clauses. If you want more information on linking structures, sign up for free or upgrade to a package at e2testprep.com and get access to our detailed summarized written text method videos. Now before we begin practicing, I want to give you one more very important piece of advice. The summary you write should summarize only the most important parts. You need to leave a lot out. The summary will be the skeleton, the bare bones. Keep it simple. Okay, let's do this first practice task together. I'm going to read it out loud. Follow along with me. Sea lions are pinnipeds, a group of marine mammals including walruses and seals able to walk using their four fins or flippers. While millions of years ago their ancestors lived on land, modern pinnipeds live at sea but come ashore for long periods. Six extant species of sea lion are known, ranging in distribution from the tropics to subarctic waters in both hemispheres except for in the northern Atlantic Ocean. They are large animals which live on average for 20 to 30 years, ranging in weight from 300 to 1000 kilograms depending on the species. Sea lions consume large quantities of food as much as 5 to 8% of their body weight in a single feeding session. In the 1980s and 1990s, large numbers of sea lions were accidentally killed in the nets of commercial fishing trawlers targeting squid. As a result, several species of sea lion were threatened. As breeding populations are relatively small, the loss of considerable numbers of adult animals began to have an impact on populations. In 2001, sea lion exclusion devices known as sleds were introduced into the Auckland Island squid fishery, with this extended to the Campbell Island southern blue whiting fishery in 2013. The sled is a grid-like frame with 23 centimeter apertures which is positioned in the trawl net. It prevents sea lions from entering the caught end of the net, allowing them to exit through a hooded escape hatch in the net lengthener. Sea lions have a 97% probability of surviving a sled escape. Okay, let's have a closer look at the first paragraph. I'm going to show you what I think are the key words. Here they are. Sea lions, marine mammals, from the tropics to subarctic waters, and large. Now let's use these words to reduce the first paragraph down to one simple sentence. Sea lions are large marine mammals found around the world. Let's now do the same with the second paragraph. 
The most important words are sea lions, accidentally killed, fishing trawlers, several species, threatened. Let's combine these keywords into a summary sentence for the second part of the text. We can write something like this. Large numbers of sea lions were being accidentally killed by fishing trawlers, which threatened the population of several species. Okay, we're doing well. Let's try the same thing with the final paragraph of the text. Remember, keywords, single simple sentences. Here are the keywords, sea lion exclusion devices, prevents, entering, net. Let's make a simple sentence with these words. Sea lion exclusion devices prevent sea lions from entering the net. Okay, so now we have three simple sentences. Let's see if we can combine them together to make one complex but clear single sentence summary of the text. Here are our three sentences. Sea lions are large marine mammals found around the world. Sea lions were being accidentally killed by fishing trawlers, which threatened several species. Sea lion exclusion devices prevent sea lions from entering the net. Let's now link the three simple sentences into a single, complex summary sentence. We can experiment with conjunctions, relative pronouns, and other linking devices such as ing endings. How about this? Sea lions are large marine mammals found around the world that were being accidentally killed by fishing trawlers, which threatened several species until sea lion exclusion devices were invented, preventing sea lions from entering the net. We have to add in were invented to show the connection. Now that we've connected these three sentences, we have a comprehensive and cohesive summary of the main points of the text. We have all the most important information, but have excluded a lot of less important details. Our summary sentence is concise and clear, with no unnecessary detail that might confuse or lead to difficulties with coherence or cohesion. This sentence would also score well because the grammar is accurate and the vocabulary is precise. For the summarized written text task, it is a good idea to recycle key vocabulary from the source text rather than try to find synonyms that may not have the same precise meaning. We shouldn't lift whole clauses or groups of more than four or five words. Summarizing means choosing only the most important words from throughout the text and linking them with our own choice of language. This sentence also had correct spelling and punctuation. Notice the use of commas to separate the clauses. Think of a comma as a pause. If you need to pause when reading your sentence to convey the meaning, then a comma is required. It's important to proofread your sentence before you submit it. I recommend that you read your sentence back to yourself out loud. This way you will hear errors that your eye might skip over. If you can't read your summary sentence easily with clear, logical flow, it'll be because of an issue with grammar or punctuation. Remember, if you'd like feedback on your writing from an expert PTE teacher, sign up for free at e2testprep.com. Okay, it's time to practice again with a new text. As suggested, you should take two minutes to read the text, six to seven minutes to write your response, and two minutes to proofread and edit. So here it is. Feel free to pause the video and try writing a summary sentence. Remember, in the test, you will have 10 minutes to do this. How did you go? Remember, there is no one right answer. It can be written in different ways. Before we write our summary, let's read the text together. Eye movement desensitization reprocessing, EMDR, was discovered in 1987 by Francine Shapiro, who later developed the concept into what is now a widely accepted form of psychotherapy for people suffering from traumatic memories and the effect these have on their everyday life. She noticed that rapid lateral eye movements seemed to be helpful in decreasing negative emotions associated with disturbing memories. She conducted a scientific study with a variety of patients, finding success with people suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, particularly military veterans who had been exposed to often horrific situations beyond what most people would ever expect to have to confront.
Using eye movement most likely connected to the rapid eye movement experienced during REM sleep, where sleep is at its deepest and most dreaming takes place, usually in the period before waking, the therapy works to reprocess traumatic memories so that negative thoughts associated with memories are replaced with more positive associations, with the result that the patient remembers rather than relives the event. This is also reflected in the reaction of the body when trauma memories and responses are triggered. Shapiro's hypothesis was that when distressing experiences overwhelm our normal coping mechanisms, the memories around the event and associated stimuli are inadequately processed and are retained in an isolated memory network. For reasons difficult to explain, moving eyes rapidly from left to right seems to have an effect in reprocessing such memories. Let's now summarize the text together. Here is the first paragraph of the text. Let's remove everything except the keywords. They are eye movement desensitization reprocessing, psychotherapy, rapid lateral eye movements, and disturbing memories. And now let's join them to make a simple sentence summary of the paragraph. Eye movement desensitization reprocessing is a type of psychotherapy that uses rapid lateral eye movements to treat disturbing memories. Great, let's do the same with the second paragraph. Please don't worry if your summary is different. Remember, there is no one correct answer. Here's paragraph two. Let's take the keywords scientific study, patients, and post-traumatic stress disorder. And now we can make another simple sentence summary of the paragraph. A scientific study was done of patients with post-traumatic stress disorder. These initial sentences are short and simple. Now let's do the third paragraph. Once again, we take the keywords, this time from the third paragraph. Eye movement, reprocess traumatic memories, remembers, and relives. And we use them to make a concise summary of the paragraph. Eye movement helps reprocess traumatic memories so patients remember instead of reliving the memories. Notice how we need to make small changes to verb endings to ensure we're using the correct grammar. Remembers became remember and relives became reliving. Okay, one paragraph to go and then we can combine our simple sentences into one complex single sentence summary of the text. Again, Let's take just the key words from the final paragraph. Inadequately, processed, moving eyes, reprocessing, and memories. For this sentence, to make it clear and simple, we can change the order of the key words. And then we can change the words slightly to make the sentence grammatically accurate. Moving eyes reprocesses inadequately processed memories. Okay. Let's put our four simple sentences together and see how we can combine them into one complex sentence summary of the whole text. So, here are our four sentences, each from one paragraph. And here is one way we can link them. Eye movement desensitization reprocessing is a type of psychotherapy that uses rapid lateral eye movements to treat disturbing memories, especially for patients with post-traumatic stress disorder who found that it helps reprocess traumatic memories so they remember instead of reliving them. Your answer may be different and that's okay. The important things are that your summary is a complex sentence, it captures the content of the text, that the vocabulary is precise, and the spelling, punctuation, and grammar are accurate. Ideally, your sentence should be around 30 to 40 words long and should contain three or four main ideas from throughout the text. So in this video, we completed two practiced, summarized written text tasks. Practice makes perfect, but remember, you won't know how to improve if you don't get feedback. Be sure to sign up to e2testprep.com for free and get heaps of summarized written text practice and expert teacher feedback on all sections of the PT test. Thanks for watching and good luck.